Hello friends, welcome to Flipkart's Safety Induction Training Module. By the end of this module, you will be able to understand the purpose of the global environment health and safety policy, understanding safety-related incidents, general site safety rules and safety signs, operational safety and its applicability in various scenarios, dog safety, electrical safety, permit to work, safe manual handling, fire and emergency response and road safety. To start with, first, let us understand what does safety at the workplace means. Workplace safety refers to the state of being safe and free from the occurrence or risk of injury, danger, or loss. All the employees must be aware of the safety at their workplace to avoid any dangerous situations. Flipkart is committed to complying with all applicable environmental, health, and safety laws and regulations in the locations where we operate. This commitment includes reducing the environmental impact of our products and operations, as well as preserving the health and safety of our employees and customers. All Flipkart employees are expected to comply with this policy. Failure to comply may result in disciplinary action, up to and including termination. To ensure that we maintain safety at the workplace, there are certain measures that we keep in mind. The first and most important thing is to report the incidents. Let us know more about the importance of reporting incidents. Starting with what does an incident mean? An incident is an unintended event that disturbs the health and safety of an employee at the workplace. Safety-related incidents can be caused due to primarily three reasons which are unsafe conditions, unsafe acts, and near-miss incidents. Let us understand each in detail. Unsafe condition, a condition that may cause harm to self or others. An example of an unsafe condition is an electric wire lying on the water. Unsafe act, an activity that is conducted in a manner that may cause harm to self or others. An example of an unsafe act is a person plugging in the wet wire into the electric socket. Near miss incident, it is an unplanned event that did not result in injury or damage, but it has the potential to do so. Example, the person getting shocked when he plugged the wet wire into the socket. Let us watch a few examples of unsafe incidents at the workplace. If you notice any near-miss in the workplace, please report to supervisors or in charge. This will help in correcting and reducing the risks of damage. Now let us understand what general site safety rules and safety signs are. The safety signs at the workplace help to identify and warn the workers who are working on the floor. There are four types of safety signs. Let us understand each in detail. The signs which are in the blue circle are called mandatory signs. These signs provide specific instructions that must be carried out. The signs which are in the yellow triangle are called warning signs. These signs warn of hazards or conditions that are not likely life-threatening. The signs which are in a red circle with a strike are called prohibited signs. These signs indicate an action or behavior that is not permitted in the workplace. The signs which are in the green square are called emergency signs. These signs indicate the location or directions to emergency facilities. General site safety rules are mandatory rules to be followed while working on the sites. A few signs of general site safety rules are shown on the screen. Now we come to operational safety. Operational safety means the absence of unreasonable risk that can be caused due to functional insufficiencies of the intended functionality. Example, conveyor belt issues, operational disturbances, example, environmental conditions like a wet floor, all spillage, etc., or reasonably foreseeable misuse errors by the equipment handlers. The equipment that comes under operations are industrial trucks, trolleys, conveyor belts, pallets, hand pallet trucks, etc. Let us see how to safely handle these equipment in FC and MH. 
Let us start with powered industrial trucks. The powered industrial trucks are used to carry, lift, push, pull, transfer, and stack materials. The types of powered industrial trucks are Articulated forklift Reach truck And order picker the hazards caused by powered industrial trucks are Equipment hit to person Fall of material from height Collision of two equipment Rack collapse due to hit by powered industrial truck and Tip over The general safety measures that must be followed while handling powered industrial trucks are Only authorized persons are allowed to operate powered industrial trucks Passengers should not ride alongside the driver. Always keep a safe distance from powered industrial trucks. Don't drive with raised fork. Don't stand under lifted forks of powered industrial trucks. Don't stand or move under raised forks. As you understood about the power industrial truck, let us now look at the do's and don'ts while handling a trolley. The trolley is used to move materials from one place to another within the FCs and MH. Starting with, before using a trolley always do a visual inspection like checking the wheels, sharp edges, damages, locking mechanism, etc. Do not use a damaged trolley. If you see any defects, immediately inform the supervisor and place the damaged trolley in the repair or maintenance area. Do not overload the trolley and do not stack materials over the vision level. When you are placing the materials in the trolley make sure you place them in such a manner that you can see the way that you are walking. While moving the trolley from one place to another, always push the trolley from behind holding the handle. Do not push the trolley suddenly and never pull the trolleys while moving them. Maintain a safe distance between other trolleys or people while handling the trolleys. Do not ride on the trolley and do not climb on it. Now we come to the conveyor belt. Let us understand the safety measures to be followed while working at the conveyor belt. The conveyor must always be used by an authorized person only. Don't stand or ride on the conveyor belt. Don't crawl under the powered or non-powered conveyor belt. Don't wear loose clothes or loose hair while working near a conveyor belt. Don't throw shipments on the conveyor belt. As we understood about the conveyor belt, let's look at the safety measures that are followed while handling pallets. The height of the pallet building shall be 6 feet, inclusive of pallet and goods. While building a pallet, a double-belted wrap or strap shall be provided for the pallet and goods. Use a hand pallet truck for the movement of the loaded pallet to its designated stacking rack. And use a forklift to stack the pallet on racks. Defective pallets shall be stored in a separate and designated location. Don't block emergency exits and fire protection equipment while stacking the pallets. Don't block the pathway while staging pallets on floors. Don't drag or drop the empty pallets on the floor. Don't keep the pallet in a vertical position. Now let us understand the hand pallet truck. The safety measures that must be followed while handling hand pallet truck are Only authorized person should operate. Check for conditions of equipment before using them. Don't overload them and maintain the standard height to avoid falling off the material. Pump the steering handle to lift the fork. While pumping stand straight and pump with both hands until the pallet is off the ground. Press the release valve lever trigger to lower down the fork. Ensure no body parts or material below. You can push and pull a pallet jack. Depending on how you need to maneuver it, ensure vision and pathway are clear. Park the hand pallet truck in a designated location only, don't obstruct the pathway. Now let us look at the safety measures to be followed while working with other tools such as steps tool, tote, 
tape gun, and cutter. Safety measures to be followed while using step stool. Don't use a damaged step stool. Don't overstretch from the step stool while accessing the rack. Climb one step at a time. Safety measures to handle tote. Use both hands and provision provided in tote to lift. Stack the tote in a stable manner. Don't drag the tote. Safety measure to use tape gun. Ensure the tape gun is in good condition and know how to use it. Lift the tape gun upright 45 degrees to cut the tape. Safety measures to use cutter. Use only safety knives to break the tags of the bags, cut the boxes, etc. Strictly do not use substandard tools such as asha blades, retractable cutters, knives, etc. Slip strips falls are a leading cause of injuries at the workplace. Let us see how to avoid slip strips falls. Slip, trip or fall. Always maintain good housekeeping practices. Avoid dumping materials in pathways. Use handrails while accessing the staircase. Don't use mobile. Don't run inside the facility. Wear proper footwear. We have now understood the safety measures that must be followed while using various equipment that come under operational safety. Now, let us understand the dock safety. The dock is the main area where products are moved in and out of the fulfillment centers. The safety measures that must be followed at the dock are Vehicle clearance, concerned department shall communicate for entry of the vehicle inside the premises. Vehicle parking All vehicles shall be parked at docks in such a way that no space is left between vehicle and dock leveler. Wheel chalk The security guard shall hand over the wheel chalk to the driver and assist him in positioning it properly. Placing of wheel chalks The driver shall place the wheel chalks one at the rear wheel and one at the front wheel. Security shall give the three safety cones to the driver and ask him to place one in front and the other two on the left and right sides of the truck. Key handover, the driver shall hand over the key to the security personnel at the dock. Key management, key shall be deposited at the key management board till the operations are completed at the dock. No driver or cleaner shall be allowed to sleep rest under the vehicle inside the premises. Drunk and drive shall not be allowed inside the premises. Now we come to electric safety. Let us understand what electrical safety is. Electrical safety is a system of organizational measures and technical means to prevent electric current from harmful and dangerous effects on workers. Let us see the do's and don'ts to be followed in electrical safety. Only competent persons should engage in the electrical jobs. Do not store flammables near electrical equipment. Do a visual inspection of electrical equipment before using. Do not handle electrical equipment in wet conditions. Ensure the switchboards are free from damage and well fixed on the wall. Do not overload the electrical equipment. Use only tools and equipment with non-conducting handle. Do not pull an electrical cord from the wall. Now let us see what is permit to work. A formal permission document provided with safety checkpoints that shall be complied with and authorize the prior start of work. Now let us understand what manual handling is and what precautions are to be taken to do safe manual handling. The process of lifting, carrying, stacking, and storing material by the man is called manual handling. The hazards associated with manual handling are finger cuts and crush injury, lower back pain, muscle strains, Fractures Steps to follow to do safe manual handling are Stop and think Adapt a good posture Get a firm grip Move the feet And finally put down and adjust When the load is more than 20 kgs do a team lifting or use material handling equipment Let us see what fire and emergency response is The proper response by individuals to assure the safety of others and limit the damage caused by fire and smoke is known as fire emergency response. Steps to follow to escape the fire at your workplace are On discovering a fire, sound the alarm, using one of the many signaling points. 
Leave the building by the closest exit point and use the staircase to leave the building. Report to the safe assembly point. Follow instructions at a safe assembly point. Do not attempt to fight fires unless you are trained. Do not use lifts. Do not run while evacuating. Do not block the exits. Do not stop to collect your belongings. Do not re-enter the building until instructed to do so by a member of the site team. Now let us understand what road safety is. Road safety refers to the methods and measures used to prevent road users from being killed or seriously injured. The safe commuting techniques to follow while riding on the roads are Stay focused, keeping your hands on the wheel. Keep your eyes moving. Go with the flow. Make yourself visible. Adapt to road conditions. Familiarize yourself with traffic rules. Following these techniques help us avoid accidents and injuries. The graph here shows the percentage increase in distracted drivers' response times. That's all friends we have reached the end of the module. Thank you.